from the RX Muscle Studios, this is the Heavy Muscle Show. With your host, Dave Palumbo. Featuring the Black Pack. Jimmy Palaccia. Mr. K. Diego B. Jeff the Producer. All right, guys, we're back from break, and uh, we were just uh, starting to talk about some interesting topics as far as weight training goes. Uh, I have some dieting questions I want to ask Jimmy. Uh, it's funny because I think it was for the 2001 USA Championships, you know, you and I were t- discussing and, and running some ideas behind by each other, and you said to me, you know, Dave, why don't you do some cardio? Now, I was probably 270 at the time, and I was, like, shredded. I'd shredded glutes. And I said, Jimmy, what do I need to do cardio for? You know, I'm, more, I, I'm afraid I'm going to lose muscle. You said, no, no, no. Explain to me, you know, and, and it actually worked. When I, I actually did, moved up. Yeah. Yeah. Broke into that top five, and then the following year I took second twice, right. and unfortunately I never got my pro card, but my body did look better. Why do you think that cardio is important to the bodybuilder? Well, it, it, even, just, to the mic a little bit more, even, even just off-season, two reasons, and I, I don't know how, you, how well you did. I certainly remember going over to your house in, in Long Island, and the first thing you did, you, t- you put two uh, metrics of HMB water, slugged it down. Yeah. The first five minutes, so you, you were a power eater. You knew, the, knowledge, you knew the, you know, the importance of pounding in the protein, but two biggest issues is intraset recovery. Mm-hmm. So when you see guys that don't do cardio, and I'm even talking off season, 20 right. by three, and th- there's a the pro bodybuilder from New Jersey that you know very very well. That was, I think, it was in your wedding party, uh, Jason. Yes, Arts. and he he was big on the three by twenty intraset recovery. You see somebody doing a set of bent over rows off season. What are they doing? They're sitting on the bench. Right. There's no. They're not getting a lot of time under tension. It's a, it's a great analogy. You're not going to do a lot of volume. Not going to do overload. They, they, they need way too much of a rest interval. So mm-hmm. that by itself, increasing intraset recovery so that you're getting that much more volume in per each workout. So you believe in doing less rest? Um, you, you, inevitably, you're going to be that much more fit. So you, you know your your rest your worst your work rest interval is going to be that much that right. much uh, uh, so quicker. Absolutely. Do you feel that if you don't do as much appetite too? Okay, I, I, I think that bodybuilding's always been the battle of the fork and the knife. That's the analogy that my brother John used with bodybuilding. He fit, you know he's, he was the CEO of a publicly traded company, brilliant kid, and that was the analogy. He said he goes, "This isn't easy. It's not the barbell incline and the dumbbell this." He said, "It's the battle of the fork and the knife. It's shoving it in." Mm-hmm. And so a little bit of cardio, 20 by 3, off-season, that's going to keep... 20 minutes, coming. three times a week. 20, 20 minutes, three times a week. Let me ask you a question. If you had to do it all over again, all right, if you, knowing what you know now, and you had to become a bodybuilder, you're 20 years old again, what do you do? Tell me exactly how you would I, go about it. I probably would have been top 10 in the Olympia. What, what would you have done differently? I would have done a lot better. I mean, I did a lot of things counterproductive. I wouldn't have done two hours of cardio. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have. Uh, I wouldn't have gone so hypocaloric. I certainly wouldn't have gone so hypoenergetic, meaning low carb, low fat. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I. You know, I got to a point sometimes where I would. I really didn't eat that much protein, on, on a, and then you get into an overtraining syndrome, and then you're doing double splits, and you're thinking I'm not doing enough, but all it's really causing is a, a low appetite and an overtraining syndrome. Mm-hmm. So it, you know, it becomes so you overtrained. Is that what you said? Oh, oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Because I had too much time in my hands. Because you, you were doing it. Prof- you were doing sure. it as a live for once, a living. Once you get a pro card and you have. But, you know, we, WBF was terrific financially, but you have too much time in your hands. True, true. Yeah. Jeff, you want to ask? Yeah, um, Jimmy, uh, I think I heard Scott Connolly was talking about you, and he said something that you had a very low protein intake at one point, and it was like probably around the 100 gram range or something. Probably 150 at, at times, Jeff. Yeah. And, I, and this is while you were competing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And what happened at that time? I, did, I stopped growing. Right. And why did you cut your protein back so low? No, just appetite. Oh, you couldn't eat? Too much anaerobic, uh, not enough aerobic. I, 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 Billy Smith was a firm believer that off-season doing a little bit of cardio. Cardio done at 70% of max heart rate or what's called Carvonin formula, mm-hmm. um, it, it's not counterproductive. It's actually, he, he always believed it was conducive to hypertrophy, of putting on muscle. Mm-hmm. And just by increasing... So no tension on the legs though, right? 70%. Mm-hmm. You know. so, you, so you believe in, in, in a high output then? 70% is pretty high. 65, 70, but okay. that, that, that's, the studies have all shown that mm-hmm. that's optimal lipolysis without any uh, catabolism. What's too much? Too much per session? Great question. Yeah. 30 minutes. So there's no reason to do 30 minutes. Spacing them out every 12 hours. 
So if you do a body part in the morning and then 12 hours in between, 12 hours is optimal where it doesn't become systemically tiring, mm -hmm. but better off doing the 30 in the morning and the 30 at night than 45 total. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And I, I've seen many pros that never did over 30. I did an hour and an hour. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of it had to do with, you know, not, um, did you need it or do you think you just psychologically needed oh, it? I think it was like a hamster running around a bit. <laughs> you, you know, when you see people, go, you go into gyms and you see people doing the same piece of cardio and cardio and cardio over and over and over, they're not even monitoring their heart rate, which to me is absurd. I mean, yeah. the, the heart rate monitor is the key to aerobic. What do you so, think is, is the ideal uh, for, on the heart rate monitor? It's, it's called Carvonin formula. So mm -hmm. it's, it's 220 minus your age, minus your resting heart rate. That adds in your, per, your current condition. Mm -hmm. I've trained people for shows, and I've had guys for various reasons that are 80. So they're going to have to go higher. Mm -hmm. Some people that are really, really fit, low body fat, maybe they were, they were athletes like you. You probably have yeah. a lower resting heart rate just by I did, yeah. being an endorsement. Probably 58. Went, Even when you were yeah. bigger, yeah. Well, it went up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. well, that's water. It was thirty-eight when it was when I was uh, and you know, an athlete. Water runner. And crowd yeah. on the highway. That's so, true. You're yeah. right. Meaning, meaning that. So you think that a little bit of cardio every twelve hours is is more productive to putting muscle on and staying leaner? Just amping your metabolism twice. Or anything over thirty. Now you're so glycogen depleted. It's very feasible. Your body's always going to want to make sugar. It's very feasible. You could start actually calling. You know, you know, trying to break down some uh, lean muscle tissue into glucose. Mm -hmm. Right. And you you are always shredded. I mean, as far as I I remember, every time I saw you, you were always like really, really lean. And so are you doing a yeah. completely opposite right. modality. Yeah, yeah. And, it's and weird, so right? You, you're a ketosis guy. I'm a conditioning yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 was, I was talking early to Morty. Here and, you know, sometimes you drive out to the east end of Long Island and somebody's changing lanes and somebody's driving in the middle and you both end up in the same place. That's true. That's yeah. true. Now... I got to ask you about one specific photo shoot. Everyone always, whenever they hear Jim Quinn, the future, they they think of that twin lab ad you did where <clears> there was a guy walking. You were walking out of a, a like a pod, space yeah, like a time pod. machine or something yeah. like that. Like this, I think they showed a guy walking in who was really skinny, and then you were walking out right and <laughs> yeah. <it was> massively <laughs> yeah. veined out legs and everything like that. How did that photo shoot come about? Talk to me a little bit about well, that. Well, there was, a, there was a, an ad agency that Twin Lab had always used, and they you had worked the at Twin Lab at the time. It's Black, always with Steve Twin Blackman, Lab and, yeah. and the Black, Steve Blackman, you know, really the developer of all the product line at that point. Incredible product, right. great credibility. I actually worked in the corporate office right to. Oh, you did sales in that, didn't you? Uh, I actually was the the advertising and circulation okay. manager, muscular development, right up to winning my pro card. <laughs> and then, I, then the WBF came about, and then I went back to him on an endorsement contract. Great people, great product. You know, you talk about the sports nutrition industry now versus then, uh, night and day scenario. Mm -hmm. But it, it was a warm day, and we did it in the valley. And in California? In, in California, yeah. And, and so Steve and Neil wanted Freaky, and they're like, right, go for it. Yeah, I said, great. Freaky crazy? muscle, yeah. yeah. And so it was about 95 degrees, and I stood outside, let the sun beat down on I me. Mean, you know what you look like when you come sure. out of a tanning bed, when you're a little bit of thermogenesis, mm -hmm. well, the vascularity came out, and it, and it came, became a pretty good shot. Yeah, that was a classic. I mean, that ran in, in every magazine. Insane looking. Everyone was, still was, remembers it that. It was a pretty good day. That was like three weeks out. <laughs> and then, <laughs> typical me, I, I, I overdid it, and you always thought you can't step on... To, I'm sure you probably dealt with that, too. You, you know, when you were competing in national shows, sure. and you'd, you'd weigh in at like 264, yep. and nobody thought you can compete at that level. It was almost like you were embarrassed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd, you'd over-diet to come in at like 255, thinking and nobody can get a pro card. Well, I competed at 281 once, and, and they told, and the fans loved it. The judges didn't, and I had to come down to 265 to get that look that they wanted you right. know, from me. So cannibalize yeah. the muscle right. tissue. Right, right. That's exactly what right. it was. Right. And which is antithetical to you know what bodybuilders in general want to do. What, what, did, what did everybody in this room first start with? How much do you bench? Right. And, and let's get bigger. Right. With hypertrophy. Right. Why stop? That's right. Why stop? Why do you think there's too stop? much? Is it? Did Ronnie no. Coleman get too big in your mind? You know what? Ronnie's got such a phenomenal bone structure that the amount of muscle that that guy's put on with such an amazing bone structure, he still gets away with it. Mm -hmm. Even Jay. I mean, there's not much room. You know, yeah. or even um, what's the other fellow from Texas with the huge quads? Branch I mean, Warren. Branch Warren. I mean, they're so packed. There's no more. It, it looks like there's no more room for muscle, mm. but they still have good symmetry. 
yeah. you know, so so they can get away. They can still look good in the front. Well, that's what line. makes the, the top guys from the sure. guys that are you know maybe yeah. not the top you can guys. Still hit an aesthetic pose right. with that amount of muscle. See, I couldn't do that. I couldn't you, do that either. That was my problem. Yeah. That, so know? we had to make up for for the yeah. lack of aesthetics with more muscle. Chest and most muscular. And in the in the photo shoots afterwards. You were good in photo shoots and guest poses. Yeah. Which is unfortunately the best way to make money, you know. But it but it did hurt. It did bother you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, always, of course. Oh, yeah. As a bodybuilder, you always want to win. Did it bother you that you, you never got on that Olympia stage? Big time. Yeah, big time. Was that a regret? I, I used to fly home from, you know, the Niagara Falls or, you know, a Chicago pro show. And, you know, the, the stewardesses would go, you were 11? <laughs> what, what did the other guys look like? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'd, and I'd get off she didn't have shorts on and oh, a tank top no, on the plane. You know? That was my, that was my uh, prejudging. Yeah. Yeah. I could beat everybody in the airport. Yeah. <laughs> I could beat the, you were uh, Mr. Olympia in a tank yeah, top. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I could beat the pilots and the stewards. But, uh, <laughs> I couldn't beat the other IFBB pros. But no, it was it was, it was always disheartening. You, you're you right. a competitor. Right. You were a track I know, look, I, I can totally relate you to what you're saying. Yeah. You know, and so I always say the only person that walks away from a bodybuilding show is the guy that wins. Mm-hmm. Second's horrible. Second's worse than 11. Right, right. You think you that the second's be better. You, you, you think it's better, but it's really not. Oh, that means that you missed color or your posing routine wasn't. Yeah. You, you didn't do that last little bit mm-hmm. to beat everybody. Yeah. Look, you know, look at like a guy like Asparri in our in, right. in our era that was second so often. Right. They must have killed him. Yeah. Well, now he's, got, now he's doing very well. He's <laughs> well company, Richie's so. always going to yeah. do well. He's, he's a driven guy. Would you be a bodybuilder again if you had to do it all over? No. What would you do? I would have uh, probably shot up with painkillers when I was at Dallas and played in the NFL. Really? Yeah. And that's I, I what actually, they wanted you to do? I actually left camp. I, I walked out of camp. So you could have stayed if you would have wanted yeah, to. Yeah, I was still getting paid, and I, was on a, I, I got released on a waiver. I actually made a decision to walk out of camp because when I went down to camp, I was starting a bodybuilder already. And I was training with. Did you get hooked on the whole bodybuilding thing? And I, by the time I got down to camp, which was in California, mm-hmm. you know, locked away with 120 guys in a, in a college dorm, mm-hmm. banging heads for four hours a day. And I said, yeah, I don't know if I want to do this. Right. I played since I was eight, but I had the bodybuilding bug. Yeah, and even and when it, I was in camp, they were calling me the Hulk man. And yeah, when it bites you, you can't you can't let go. I mean, yeah. You guys know PJ probably can attest to that. This is hysterical. If we could what? have had an NFL freaking player yeah. right in the room right now. He we could have a doctor in the room right. on that's that right. microphone. We right wouldn't there. be in the room if there were if you were a football player. And I was a doctor, so <laughs> there, no there would be no room. Right? No room. That's right. Well, so let's. What are you talking about? Yeah, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be Aaron at the, in front of the desk. I'll be back here in the same place. So, so, so you. You are, are are more so with the, the ketogenic diet than conditioning, but but Morty said that you still got people conditioning. Oh, I always have. I'm a big cardio believer. Yeah, quite honestly, I you. didn't need. I didn't think I needed cardio because I was so lean. But most guys do need cardio. I believe in low intensity cardio, however, to ensure that you're using fat as a fuel source. Right. Uh, especially with a ketogenic diet, where you're not going to have right. any glucose available to, to to do a higher intensity type cardio. Right. Again, two you know two different lanes, probably ending up in the same same destination. same destination. Right. Yeah. Right. All right, now that we got Jimmy Quinn here, we have a legend here. We're going to have a special pose down. We're going to end the show with a special pose down. You're going to be the judge. I, got, I thought you were going to tell me to take my clothes off. No. Oh, no. <laughs> see that? No, I, see didn't, I didn't know if my wife wants to see that. This husband's Let's see the arm. Let's show us an arm show. I'll show you one thing that. Look at that. He's ripped. He's still on. Jeff, get the picture. Get over there. Get a picture of his. Wait a minute. Those don't ever go away. Those don't ever go away. I bet he's got the freaky calves still, too. Incredible. Yeah, you stick my finger yeah. in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you can always eat right and stay in condition. You do you eat? You still eat perfectly? I, I eat stricter now than when I was competing in an IFBB show. Really? Now, yeah. why is that? Just for health purposes and feeling uh, good about yourself? You know, just uh, you, you know, being a, a strength coach now and and you know, and being a trainer in New York City, it, you know, it's it's just part of looking the part. Where do you, you train know? people? Practice what you preach. Um, actually, at Strive Gym. Okay. Here's the plug. What, what? And East 59th, right under the 59th Street Bridge. Really? Um, two That's not the old Equinox, is it? Not the, Equinox, old, the, the old Dolphin. The old Dolphin, dolphin and yeah. then the Powerhouse. Right. And it's two uh, investment bankers that are in their early 60s, and they're pretty much retired, and they're both into fitness. One's a runner, one's into lifting. Really? And they wanted to be in the fitness business. They wanted to stay fit. They love it. So the owners, are Eves and Malou, are terrific. You know, I have a great situation. You still take the bus all the way downtown? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He comes yeah. from all the way up to state. New York, you're a nut. It's not that big. No, it's, what is it? Like it's an hour only and a half? 54 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. It, it, when, you know, when you go on a 4.30, there's nobody in the road at 4.30. You go in the morning. Like the yeah. deer. 
Yeah. <laughs> when do you get out of there? Those are the only other passengers. I'm sorry? When do you get home at night? Um, no, I usually get home in, in time to take my son out of school. So at, at 2.30, I, oh, okay. I pick That's up Mr. Bad. Brady. Oh, okay. yeah. How old is uh, Brady Quinn? He's five and a half. No, yeah. no, no relation to the football no, player. No, and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm still married. Ed Connors actually had uh, another little kind of a nuance. He wouldn't go to your wedding, he right? He would never go to Bobby Moore's <clears throat> wedding. Right. Yeah. He said they never lasted. Right. He said typically they wouldn't make it past a year or right, ten years. He told me, most of the time he is. He told yeah. me he didn't come to your wedding because he was worried he would run into Jimmy. He came to my wedding. He did. Oh, okay. He sure did. Oh. Yeah, because uh, yeah, you got Ed's blessing, huh? It's yeah. like it's like getting yeah. your father's blessing. Yeah. Yeah. My mom and dad have been married for like fifty five years, so he figures it was in the in the in the in the, in the genes. So. You're Catholic, right? Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Only one kid. Are, the, are your parents a little upset with that? Well, you know, when you do testosterone for about fourteen <laughs> decades, it's kind of tough to get one. Was it hard to get pregnant? Three years. Wow. Very, tu- very wow. tough. Yeah, but you did it. Yeah. So you know that that's one of the things that you didn't think about when you were right. doing all this stuff, and then later on, sometimes it comes back to haunt. Yeah, I don't know how if I'll ever be able to. We'll see. It's that's tough. It. Yeah. Hello, my name is Jack Owa, CEO and Chief Scientific Officer of VPX Redline. I designed Redline Ultra Hardcore with a dual action micro tab and liquid delivery system. This makes Redline Ultra Hardcore the fastest acting, longest lasting, strongest stacking fat in the history of sports nutrition. First, micronized particles within the liquid phase of the delivery system enter the body within seconds. Then the black and blue microtabs bypass the destructive acidic environment of the stomach. They then enter the alkaline environment of the intestines where they burst open and release potent active ingredients into the system. Amazingly, the black and blue microtabs release steadily into the body for up to three hours. Redline Ultra Hardcore's proven steady state release of actives starts to work in 45 seconds at last for several hours. This is hardcore, scientific, cutting-edge technology. This is the most advanced tri-action, dual microtab and liquid delivery system in the history of sports nutrition. Because you want to burn fat fast, I made Redline Ultra Hardcore. You are hardcore. That's why you need VPX Redline Ultra Hardcore, the most technologically advanced fat-burning delivery system ever created. Get yours today, nationwide at GNC, Bodybuilding.com, and VPXSports.com.
that's champion original thinking and carries that thought process to its logical conclusion in the form of unique supplements that strictly adhere to the core nutritional principles of Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. Visit SpeciesNutrition.com to purchase the next generation of high-quality supplements available today that fully adhere to the theory of natural selection, which insists that only the fit survive. SpeciesNutrition.com Life is pain. Life is dedication. Life is pressure. Life is P28. This is the Heavy Muscle Show. With your host, Steve Palumbo. Hey, what's up? This is WWE superstar John Cena. You can't see me. Wait, that didn't work because you can see me. And you are watching RxMuscle.com, the number one site for all your bodybuilding news. All right, let's, let's do this pause now. We got Morty here, came all the way in from upstate. Where are you from? I think you guys are from the same area. Rockland County. Yeah, he's a Rockland yeah. guy. It's adjacent to us. I right, stand over there, Morty. You got your show coming up when? Ten weeks. Now, M Morty is very religious. He doesn't can't do anything on the Saturday, so oh, he yeah, actually found smoke. a Sunday show. Sunday. To what, do. A, what a cool story! And, he's an Orthodox that, Jew, yeah. and and he's and he's a competitive mm -hmm. bodybuilder. God bless. Yeah, he might, might, that's a, it, yeah. it doesn't really match to him. Jimmy, do you want to get up there with your yarmulke too? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Pete the intern. No, on. Just no, no, Pete the intern's got a show coming up in uh, how long? Six weeks. Six weeks. He's got. Uh, let's strip down, guys, and let's let's <laughs> let's let Jimmy evaluate you guys. Um. Uh, is he going to wear his yarmulke in the competition? He's going to wear his yarmulke yeah, in the yeah. competition. Yeah. Really? Yeah, he can't get yeah. for him. Wow, that's cool, man. Isn't it called a, a keeper? Yeah, I, I, I knew you'd think that keeper. was cool. I do. Yeah, I'm yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. I, like I think Jimmy should have been a Jew. I think he would have been a good I, I Jew. I think I would have been a good Jew. You know what? It's not too late. Yeah. Might work. Maybe you should convert to Jimmy. I can convert. These guys are Maybe Marty can take you to the family. convert before the end of the world. You guys look a lot more impressive than than with the clothes on. All right, where do we want to put the camera? You want to? You can't go that way, Jeff. It doesn't look good. Shoot him this way. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I'm getting them perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm telling you, you're going to hit, get the lights in the thing, and no, they're going to come out good. All right. That's I'm how we shot it last time. All right, let's see. You guys, hit the camera. Thank you, I want you to hit a front double bicep. <laughs> Dude, it's going good. <laughs> Pete is how old? 21? 21. And how old are you, Modi? 22. All right, we got some two young guys here just starting out with yep. all natural bodybuilders. Let's see a lat spread. That's a, that's a good amount of muscle and good conditioning for being a natural bodybuilder. And let's see a side chest. Only on RX Muscle do we have a pose down. This is like American Idol, Jimmy. Yeah. I'm going to get everyone's opinion on these guys afterwards. Yeah. Side tricep. He's got a freaky small one. Let's see a back double it's by. Miranda. Yeah. He's going to get a job with Calvin Klein. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see an app thigh shot from the front. Great. Yeah. Jimmy, you impressed? Very much so. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. In, in a different regard, they both look terrific. You like their symmetry, right? Yeah. I think they have very good symmetry. Small waist. Yeah. All right, guys, relax. Good bone stretch. PJ, what do you think? They're Talking both. to the mic. Let's get your expert opinion here. No, they both look very good for young guys. They're they're. Uh, how old are you? And you're 22. Yeah, they both have good solid bases, nice symmetry. You, his waist is tiny. Yeah, he's got a tiny uh, it's waist. It's impressive, especially from the side when he was vacuuming. It's really, really small. He brings when he edits the show. He brings his food. He, mm -hmm. he has. A, he's he's a neurotic. I love he's it. He's very um, long. He has he has a, 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 a long torso, but his arms are long too. So everything's pretty pretty uh, proportionate. You know, his arms are full. Everything comes out nice when he poses. So a little bit of an Arnold look, don't you think? Uh, uh, PJ, yeah, what thing I gotta ask you. Yeah. And he's a fucking tan, though, right? He's pale. Yeah. He's, he's pale. getting he will tan. He's definitely pale. Yeah. But he's well, got six weeks you a fucking to get religion tan, or something so. to get a fucking tan? No. That's easy. Well, hey, uh, Branch Warren doesn't tan at all. Neither does Evan, but uh, you guys are going to criticize me for that. So. <laughs> what do you, does the color? Yeah. No kidding. Chewbacca, mm -hmm. what do you think about this? I think they both look good, man. I think they both look good. Uh, obviously, Pete's a little closer to the contest. He's four <laughs> weeks more uh, yeah. into his diet. Right. I think they both look really good, man. I'm impressed. No All right, thanks, guys. Pete, get back behind the camera there. Pete, get back behind the camera. 
All right, well, guys, final impressions. Jimmy, I, I, you know, we could probably talk another two hours if we had to, and maybe we'll get you back down here for a... Uh, certainly go on about our different, differing views on science. Oh, that's true, that's oh, true. Yeah. We're not really differing, but just, you know, different takes on it. Can I remind you about the blood type conversation? Oh, yeah, I'm a, give me your little theory Are on you that. up on that? No, sure? I don't. You, you believe in this blood type yeah. diet, don't I, you? I, I, when I was on uh, the, the RX muscle, I guess the blog, or, you know, I'm so computer illiterate. And, <laughs> Have you been answering your thread? I, right? I was getting pounded back because I'm a blood type guy. I, I'm a big believer. Why do you believe that, first of all? Anecdotally, my son. Right. Every time we gave him milk, when we weaned him off of, uh, uh, you know, the, um, what is it? Formula. formula. The formula, thank you. And we gave him, uh, you know, commercial whole milk. And he... Uh, would get nasally and uh, you know sinusy and right. almost immediately. You don't like think it was a lactose? No. Uh, well, actually, it is lactose intolerance, and that's actually indicative of blood type O. Mm -hmm. And I'd known that, so we put him on lactate, and within a day, completely gone. Well, I'm blood type so B. Having, I can't drink any lactose. As a B. Yeah. And according to your theory, that would I should be able to drink milk, you right? Be, you should be okay. You should be okay. Not, not okay. Believe me. No lactose. Pe people know. When I was in jail, I, I, I drank right. one glass of milk, and I'm going to shit my pants before I get back to the, oh. the dorm to go to the bathroom. You're like pig pen. <laughs> yes. You're, you're, you're radius around you. <laughs> That's right. 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 <laughs> well, uh, you know, I mean, does, does it What's go? the science of it, though? The, 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 the blood type diet? Oh, here he goes. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said to you about it. Dave pouted me, and I, I said to about 10 references. There's, there's, there's plenty of references. A lot, a lot of it was uh, more health-oriented, mm -hmm. but then from an aesthetic standpoint, who took it? Jay Cutler. Yeah, a but guy I, named Todd Gansey. Yeah, Todd Gansey. From, I, from early on in my era. Yeah, but you know what? I think the blood type diet is almost like when they try to f figure out why humans stood upright and started walking rather than walking like, like the cavemen did. In the back? Well, they had all these different scenarios they made up. They all sound great. Pretty much what happened. One, one of the things was they could look over the, the trees and see predators coming, you know. Right. I mean, that's really? they, good, had, they had humans that were, that, were, that were 30 feet tall? No, not over the trees. You know, over the reeds <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> over the grasses. <laughs> yeah. you know? The Nephilim from the Bible. That's right. That's right. But, you know, so there's, there's a million different scenarios I guess you can come up with. But that's another whole story we can go into well, another you know, time. Almost... Just as another example, so a type O can break that red meat, a type A is kind of the antithesis of it, and they don't break them. It's almost uniform. Yeah. You know, within, you know, the, the big ones, the glutens is another one. Right. You know, the wheat. type O's are, you know, they don't break down gluten. So they shouldn't be eating wheat. Yeah. Yeah. So you put them on rye or Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. so that's when you, you know, you start seeing all those different gluten free breads now mm -hmm. in the bodybuilding diet. Sure. It, should, huh. it was taken from blood type. Right. Interesting. Yeah. G Jimmy Palaccia, before we wrap up the show, any final good Jimmy Quinn anecdotes you can give us? Something funny and quick? Well, I can say one thing. How about that week in uh, California when you were hanging out with me? It was about five or six rough nights in a row, right? <laughs> Is that is that when I sat on the beach for fucking yeah, six hours? Yeah, you were in a state of depression. When I, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, he's a, yeah. he's a very depressive yeah. guy. Yeah. I've noticed. That was uh, a long time ago, but uh, I, I was yeah. interviewing for a modeling agency. Yeah, I, I was going to get into some of those stories, but I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to elaborate too much with okay. uh, with the, with a lot of them. But uh, I have to say though, when I stayed with you. Uh, the first thing I got to say is that when I came, to, I, he had a nice apartment. And I went, that was uh, on the mountain there. What was that? Uh, uh, what was that? Playa right, Del Rey. Right, 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 right. South of the airport. Playa Del Rey. Yeah, it was right, a fucking right beautiful place. Right over there, he had an apartment right over the ocean. I mean, his bedroom, yeah. sliding doors. Actually, his bedroom was uh, on the platform, right? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a fun place. So he invited me out there. I flew. I, told, I actually called him up. I, told him I was coming out there. So yeah, I flew out there and I stayed with him. And uh, I, he had the same TV from... When he had his apartment at Comac. <laughs> well, he still got the same car for the last and 20 years. I, I know, that's the way he is, though. He's very frugal. Yeah. And uh, he had... Uh, Irish cheap. He, he had a little... Uh, <laughs> I just didn't know the Irish were cheap. Oh, they uh, Oh, they are? Oh, yeah. And he had like a little table with a, with an answer machine on it that was just big enough to hold the, the phone and a little pad with a little seat by, by there. And his kitchen table had one fucking chair. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked around. So obviously this is... Great way not to get comfy. You know, he, <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he did have a couch, though, but, you know, and, uh, 
And uh, so when I first got this gym, I'm starving. I didn't eat. I opened up the refrigerator. Right. And uh, it was just uh, pretty much full of chemicals for this refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing really, not really to eat. You know? I was working but, uh, for a pharmaceutical company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, it was called so, uh, uh, Serrano. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I, I took the car. He goes, take the car. I wanted to go to the gym. So I went down to the Gold's Gym. I went down here. Then uh, I came back. And he had, uh, I opened the door. And he, had, he was rolling around the floor with some lady. <laughs> so I was interviewing. I uh, I walked in and I was like, uh, okay. And he's, he's he's he had the girls and he was waving. He's going like this to me, like you know, like get the fuck out, you know. So I had to close the door. I went down to the beach and I'm on a bench, sitting on a bench watching rollerblades for fucking four or five hours like this. Was fuck, I look like a bum. I was sleeping on the fucking. And then I finally hear him yell from up the mat. Hey! You know, and it was like that was my signal to come back upstairs. And I, I heard it was but, a lot uh, of stories like that. Yeah, it was, with it was a lot of a lot of good stories, man. All right, well, we could talk about these forever. I want to make one final ask before we go. The APF New York State Championships Powerlifting Meet will be taking place Saturday, April 16th at the All Natural Gym in Lindenhurst at 11 a.m. Guys, you might want to check it out. For now, we're out of time. Uh, we'll see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad station. Thanks for watching the Heavy